journalism starts right now. In New at six, another Bear County deputy indicted for allegedly assaulting an inmate at the Bear County Jail, Eduardo Sanchez, charged with aggravated assault by a public servant and official oppression. Officials say it happened May of last year, and according to the sheriff, Javier Salazar, Sanchez hit an inmate who was causing a disturbance with a pair of handcuffs, damaging the inmate's eyes. The effects of which Salazar says the man is still dealing with. Sanchez has been placed on administrative leave while Salazar moves to fire him. He's been with the sheriff's office since 2018. Our rain chances getting better as we head into the evening tonight. Large parts of the area with a chance at getting some much needed rainfall. Adam Kasky tracking it all and as a quick look at your forecast, Adam. Yeah, Myra, we have a little bit of dampness out there right now. Not a whole lot to talk about at the moment. Let's go to the radar. Take a detailed look here. You look across the hill country and even San Antonio. Really nothing to talk about. Mainly just some low clouds with a few breaks in those clouds east of town. Not a lot to speak of. We had a few passing showers on the north side of San Antonio and Bear County, even up toward Bernie and Bulverde, but they only added up to about 500 of an inch. That was earlier this afternoon. We're watching for development closer to the Rio Grande later this evening and into the early nighttime hours. That's where we could see a few thunderstorms develop, and if they do, they would run the risk of becoming strong to severe. It's going to be one of those situations where it's all or nothing. You see, they're starting to clear out out west along the Rio Grande. That should help destabilize the atmosphere west of I-35 for the remaining hours of daylight that we have and then we just monitor through about 10 11 p.m. and if we see some thunderstorm cells blossoming well then they're likely to strengthen and become strong as they cross over the Rio Grande into Texas here and even in San Antonio we could have a few leftovers later tonight otherwise I do anticipate a damp start to the day tomorrow just because of drizzle and sprinkles so that thunderstorm potential is going to be all or nothing this evening we'll watch it if nothing develops by 10 11 o'clock then it's just going to be a little light sprinkle activity 76 at the airport now 78 port SA 80 in Castroville 74 Kerrville and Canyon Lake we go through the evening mainly just gray and humid with a few light showers here and there. We're watching for that thunderstorm potential later on tonight and then everybody has increasing rain and storm chances as we get into tomorrow night. We're going to talk about that in more detail and how much rain could fall and where coming up Steve. Thank you, Adam. You know, they can't really work from home and social distancing is a challenge, but their industry is huge when it comes to the San Antonio economy. People working in hospitality, bars, hotels, restaurants. It's why the Texas Restaurant Association is pushing to get more people in that business vaccinated. The association kicking off a two day clinic at the Wonderland of the Americas Mall and workers taking advantage tell Tiffany Huertas it's their shot to feel safe getting back to work. I'm just looking for everybody to get vaccinated. That way we can get back to normal and open the whole place up again. Wayne Glasgow works at a local restaurant and is thankful for an event like this one. I think uh, the hospitality industry is an industry that's kind of been overlooked a lot in this situation, you know, especially seeing as how we have been, you know, front lines uh, this whole time. Uh, and dealing with people that are unmasked most of the time. The Texas Restaurant Association partnered with the University Health System and other organizations to keep hospitality workers safe amid the pandemic. We had our Houston vaccine drive last week. Uh, and then this week, of course, today and tomorrow, it's here in San Antonio as well as Dallas. The initiative aims to vaccinate thousands of workers in the industry. This event is about getting people vaccinated and back to work. We, we have to create a sense of normalcy and we're getting there. The process was so much faster uh, and less painful than I thought it was going to be. For restaurant worker Luna Montoya, I'm done. <laughs> this is it. Worry was replaced by relief today. I feel so much more relieved and especially after the second dose. I'll feel so much better. The vaccination clinic continues tomorrow. To learn more information on how to sign up, visit KSAT.com. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. San Antonio police have responded to at least five calls for sexual offenses at children's shelter facilities since the start of February. That's according to records obtained by our defenders. Three of the calls, including one for lewd conduct, originated at its campus on High Ridge Circle near the medical center. Two calls for sex offenses came from the shelter's main campus on Woodlot, including a report that came in just six days ago. 
SAPD officials today refused to release any further details from those calls due to their sensitive nature. The children's shelter was forced to remove its remaining kids from its emergency shelter yesterday after state officials cited unacceptable conditions at the facility that threatened the safety of the children. Judge Peter Sakai says it's the latest setback for an already stressed foster care system. There is a, a tremendous amount of scrutiny and pressure on the system, which is causing a lot of placements to close down. Shelter officials were required to turn in an action plan Monday. The head of Family and Protective Services says it could still terminate its contract with the shelter's community-based care provider. One of the city's most scenic spaces may also be the scene of a murder. San Antonio police finding a man in Brackenridge Park this weekend badly hurt from some kind of assault. Katrina Weber confirming with the Bear County Medical Examiner that that man has died. Among the green space in the center of the city, yellow crime scene tape painted a troubling scene. Investigators were back out Monday morning in Brackenridge Park, following up on a discovery made there Sunday evening. A man who may have been homeless was found at a picnic table, at the time still struggling to stay alive after an assault. He was rushed to a hospital, but this morning, the Bear County Medical Examiner confirmed the 65-year-old died. Despite how calm and peaceful it looks here, whatever happened clearly was violent. Police say the victim was found face down in a pool of blood. Police are not saying whether they have any suspects in mind. Witnesses, though, may be hard to come by. This area of the park is off the beaten path, the kind of place you might come to escape your troubles. Instead, one man found deadly trouble here. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. A 35 year old man recovering tonight after police say he was attacked by someone with a knife overnight. It happened along South Presa near East South Cross around one this morning on the south side of the city. The victim telling police he was on his way to visit someone when he was jumped by someone he did not know, slashing him several times with that knife. That was pretty much it for the victim cooperating with police. Police say they do not have a description of the suspect. Meantime, San Antonio police trying to track down a robbery suspect. They say hit a convenience store on the city's far west side early this morning. Officers were called out to the quick stop on West Military Drive around 2 a.m. That's near Highway 151 and Loop 1604. Police say the suspect wearing a ski mask walked in, pointed a gun at the clerk and demanded cash. After getting that money, the suspect ran off. The clerk was not hurt. Just a bit less than two hours until early voting comes to an end for the upcoming city elections. Polls close around 8 o'clock tonight in Bear County. San Antonio voters will be choosing the mayor and city council for the next two years. Two big propositions also on the ballot, Prop A and Prop B. If passed, Prop A would expand the use of bonds to include all public improvements. And Prop B is looking to repeal collective bargaining for the San Antonio Police Officers Association. There's much more on the ballot for voters all across Bear County to see that sample ballot and find out where you can still cast your vote. Go to KSAT.com. Election Day, by the way, is Saturday. And Prop B may be the biggest issue facing voters in this election. Coming up later in this show, we're taking a deep dive into what repealing collective bargaining would and would not mean for San Antonio police officers. The claims for and against and the arguments that need some clarification. A special presentation of KSAT Explains Proposition B coming up after sports. Time saver traffic right now, a bit of a trouble spot. This is I-10 and Crossroads, and you can see it's actually under the overpass there, 410. A disabled vehicle off to the side. You can see that they have some cones set up. Emergency vehicles are on the scene. Does not seem to be slowing down traffic, though one lane is closed. Again, this is I-10 at Crossroads. Meantime, look outside with live cam this evening. It has looked like rain all day, but we're hoping our chances are increasing here, Adam. They are increasing, not necessarily in the short term, but you know, by this time tomorrow, we'll start to see them ramp up. The aquifer actually up a little bit today. It's up three tenths of a foot. We're still about 18 feet below the monthly average, so we're still well below average. Got to make up some ground. And we did have a few showers over the aquifer earlier today. Let's take a look at this, and you'll see that we had some of those radar returns, especially northern Bear County in the recharge and drainage zone, but it was only a few hundredths of an inch. It didn't amount to all that much. Right now, some light shower activity in Medina County. That's pushing off to the east-northeast. Not going to amount to much either. 
As for the pollen count with all this dampness, mold is high, pecan moderate, and oak on the low end. We'll be back to talk about those rain chances when they peak, how much could fall and where, coming right up. News around Texas now. One of the state's most wanted fugitives back behind bars thanks to a tip to Texas Crime Stoppers. 37-year-old Jaime Alanis arrested in Corpus Christi. Alanis wanted for robbery and parole violation. Officials say he's part of the Tango Blast Houston gang that has been on the run since last July. U.S. Marshals, state troopers, and Corpus Christi police tracking him to an apartment complex there. The tipster that made that call to Crime Stoppers getting $7,500 in reward money. The push is on in Galveston to get the cruise ship industry going again. Since the CDC halted cruise ships because of the pandemic, the lots near the port of Galveston aren't making any money. But a glimmer of hope is coming back to the area with the return of two Carnival ships returning this weekend. No immediate plans to set sail, but the operators of the ships are getting ready, hiring crew, doing work on the ships, and be ready to hit the open water when it's time to start cruising. The CDC is working on a plan for cruise ships to safely sail by this November. Galveston leaders worry that'll be too late. The cruises have already resumed in the Caribbean and Europe. All right, we know we got rain chances headed our way. Question always the timing of all of this, Adam. Yeah, and it looks like the peak for the timing is going to be tomorrow night. So that's when we should have the most widespread showers and thunderstorms. Between now and, now and then, yes, we'll have some activity out there, and we have to really talk about that as well. A few passing showers, even this evening, the highest chance or the most widespread rain will be Wednesday night. And then we're even updating our weekend forecast. We're not going to focus on it right now because we've got some good rain in the short term. But this weekend, we are introducing some elevated rain chances as we get into Saturday. That's what we're seeing some indications of. So something to stay tuned for updates on. Let's go to our satellite and radar. You look across the state, plenty of clouds, some areas of rain. Most of it was very light in nature. You get up closer to Wichita Falls and that's where they have some thunderstorm activity and within that yellow rectangle or that yellow box, that's where we have a severe thunderstorm watch. So favorable conditions for severe thunderstorms in that area. Our big driving force is this big dip in the upper level flow. This is what we like to see when we need a rainfall, and this is going to slowly work its way into northern Mexico and Texas over the coming days. And now there are indications that it's actually going to hang out for several days, which is why we're boosting rain chances a bit into the weekend. And out ahead of it, we've got Pacific moisture up above us and the very muggy Gulf moisture in place. So the ingredients are there and that's why we are anticipating some passing showers, maybe even a few thunderstorms this evening and tonight. Future cast is showing that don't pay very close attention to exactly where it's showing it. Just the mere fact that it keeps popping them up. We've got little impulses of energy above us, a lot of moisture to work with. So yeah, we'll have some scattered hit or miss activity this evening through tonight and even to start the day tomorrow 8 a.m. 7 a.m. some areas of light to moderate rain and if you don't have the actual shower activity because it's going to be random in nature if you don't have it it's still gonna be drizzly so just a damp and dreary start to the day and then by the midday and afternoon noon one two three four five Yes, I can count six, seven, eight. We could actually have a little bit of clearing out there as well. So if you work outdoors, your best time to get the work done will be midday into the afternoon because after nightfall tomorrow, come dark, that's when our rain chances start to elevate and get get higher and we should have more widespread showers and storms developing nine o'clock. I wouldn't pay so close attention to the exact time, but yeah, you know, nine, 10, 11, and then especially toward midnight and thereafter widespread activity moving through. So that's why our storm and rain chances peak overnight Wednesday into early Thursday. And as usual, this time of year, whatever develops anything with lightning and thunder really runs that risk of becoming strong to severe with the potential of some wind gusts up to 60, maybe even some localized large hail. That's always a possibility. As for rainfall potential, the real sweet spot looks like it's going to be in the hill country. Now we could see one to two inches just about anywhere, depending on where the heaviest downpour is set up, especially along and west of I-35. But right now, indications are the hill country should see some of the, the more of the showers and storms moving through, whereas you get east of I-35, uh, not quite as many, not as numerous. 69 this morning, 77 for the high. That's all we got to 77 because of the clouds. And again, a few hundredths of an inch in the rain gauges on the north side of San Antonio and up toward 
Bernie and Bulverde area. 76 now, but it's very sticky. Dew point at 70. I know it's uncomfortable, but it's good. It helps our, our rainfall potential, and so does that higher level moisture coming off the Pacific. But you can see where we've had some sun. Del Rio 89. 88 Carrizo Springs, 87 Catula. This is where we could have the thunderstorm development where you get that sunshine and that heating in the afternoon. We could see some thunderstorms popping. It's going to be an all or nothing situation, so we'll just keep an eye on it. If they do develop, there's the likelihood they would become strong to severe as they cross over the Rio Grande. And even in San Antonio, we could have some leftovers where right now we're in the 70s. This evening, temperature is not changing much. If you have an outdoor baseball or soccer game locally, San Antonio, Bear County, Maybe a brief little sprinkle or shower passing through. That should mostly be it. Tomorrow, the dampness to start the day by midday and afternoon. A little bit of sun, maybe a rogue shower or storm, but unlikely. It's after dark tomorrow is when we're expecting the main action. Then we talked about the weekend. And yes, yeah, Saturday right now, indications are that uh, we could actually have increasing rain chances. So that's something you need to check back in about. All right, lots to watch. Thanks, Adam. All right, the Cowboys usually... Count on Jerry Jones on draft day. That could be good or bad, depending on how you look at it, Greg. <laughs> I think with Stephen Jones in the room, it helps a it lot. And help, Mike yeah. McCarthy now, and having to, they have 10 picks. That is a lot of picks for one draft, including the number 10 pick overall. So what are their plans? They will let us know in a big press conference they had today. And Derek White down again. How long could he be out? Coming up. Football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys have as many as 10 picks beginning on Thursday when the NFL holds its 2021 draft. That will include the number 10 overall pick in the first round, followed by second round pick and two in the third round. The Cowboys' needs are obvious beginning in the de defensive backfield, more specifically at quarterback, where two names have been mentioned more than once already. Alabama's Patrick Sertain the second and South Carolina's J.C. Horn, especially since Chinobe Awuze decided to sign with Cincinnati. Before they make their picks, the Cowboys held a press conference today featuring Jerry and Stephen Jones and head coach Mike McCarthy. What you do expect from that 10th pick is you hope you get a little bit of all the above. Elite football character, great skill. As you go in the draft, mid first round, late first round, top of the second, they don't necessarily check all the boxes. And so that gets difficult. But we're certainly looking uh, to get the type of football player there at the 10th pick uh, that can check all the boxes. And here's a look at their picks, and you'll be amazed. Look how many picks they have up to right there. One, two, three, four. That's incredible. Up to 99 and four picks in the first 99. So the round one, number 10, round two, number 12 overall, third round, also followed by the fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. They'll put the rest of the picks in there for you a little bit later on. But as you can see, they have a lot of, of choices to pick from to start with. Our San Antonio Spurs produce their highest scoring game of the season with a win in an overtime against the Wizards in Washington, ending their eight game win streak. It was fun to watch the battle between three veterans, DeMar DeRozan, who led the Spurs with 37 points and 10 assists, against Russell Westbrook, who scored a triple double with 22 points, 14 assists, and 13 rebounds, his 29th of the season, and Bradley Beal, who led all scores in 45. The back and forth battle ended up tied at 95 all going into the fourth and stayed that way at the end of regulation behind the exchange of shots between DeMar and Westbrook down the stretch, with DeJounte Murray had 25 points and a career high. 17 rebounds. DeRozan scored nine of his 37 in the fourth quarter and overtime had a chance to win the game in regulation, but somehow his shot popped out, sending both into overtime tied at 133 all. Patty Mills, who has been struggling of late, hit two critical free throws in OT, and Beal had a chance to win it at the buzzer, but Keldon Johnson helped deny him and the Spurs escape our nation's capital with a win, 146 to 143 in overtime. After the victory in New Orleans, DeMar said if, if left on an island with only one other to guard him, He'd be the first to the pineapple. So where does DeMar think he ranks among the league's best closers? I will put myself up there. I mean, I've, I've, I've never shied away. I back down for those moments. And, you know, as, as, as those moments come, I embrace it. You know, um, it's, it's, it's the greatest moments, you know, um, that, that you want to be a part of. And I'm, I'm glad, you know, I can prove myself um, in those moments. Derek White suffered a significant injury when he went down in the third quarter, skying for a block. The Spurs guard came down on the foot of teammate Jakob Pertl, rolling his right ankle. He had to be helped off the court, did not return. White has already missed 24 games this season after two surgeries on his right foot in COVID-19 protocol. Now this, with no timetable set for his return, that Pop says does not look good. It's been tough. It's, you know, it took him a while to 
get the rust off and then you know this happens again uh, so it, it has been tough but you know other people lose players also and you're expected to move on so that's what we'll do that does not sound good and with 12 games left in the regular season it would be a shock if he is back before the playoffs if at all so the tip time tomorrow night against Miami in Miami is at seven o'clock you got a feel for the guy yeah and we're in a critical stretch here where they could really use and he had just put together 28 straight games and was doing well yeah, yeah. thanks Greg we dive into proposition B and what you need to know up next We are just days away from voters deciding on perhaps the biggest issue on the May ballot. Proposition B. It would do away with collective bargaining between the local police union and the city of San Antonio. One side claims it's a way to hold officers accountable. The other side says this is about taking money away from officers. This debate has been raging for months, but now almost decision day. So in this half of our newscast, we're laying out the facts in a special presentation of our online streaming show, KSAT Explains, a way to help you decide how you'll vote on Prop B and understand what it means for San Antonio. A confrontation ends with a civilian being killed by a police officer. Outrage and protests follow, then calls for accountability. And then it happens again in some other city in the United States. To many, it seems we are stuck in a cycle. It's why activists in communities across the nation are calling for police reform. And it's why when you vote in the May 1st election, you'll have the choice to vote for or against Proposition B. San Antonians approved Texas Local Government Code Chapter 174 in 1974, giving the police union the right to collective bargaining. By now, you've probably heard about the effort to repeal that right, but there have been mixed messages leading to confusion for voters. And you realize the problem lies within the contracts and the problem with the contract lies within 174. It's not about account accountability, it's about defunding. Repealing 174 would not be tantamount to defunding the police. That is not the way to reform or change bad behavior. But it has come to that because we don't have anything else. So now we have to take your power away because you're using that power as a weapon. In this episode, we're explaining what Proposition B is all about, the arguments for and against it, and what it would and wouldn't accomplish if it passes. KSAT explains. KSAT explains. KSAT explains. KSAT explains. On demand, in-depth perspective. Perspective on stories we bring you in our newscasts throughout the day. We're looking into concerns over voting safety during a pandemic and the battle over mail-in voting. A look at how the protests and demonstrations have played out in our city and an examination of what it means to be black in San Antonio. An issue that you have likely felt the effects of, rising property taxes. The roots of Tejano run deep in South Texas. We examine the cultural impact the music has had in San Antonio. Early voting in the May 1st election begins tomorrow, and this week's episode of Case That Explains is all about one of the most widely debated items on that ballot. Thanks for joining us for this episode of KSAT Explains. I'm Myra Arthur. On May 1st, San Antonio voters get to decide on Prop B. A local activist organization called Fix SAPD is behind that proposition. After the killing of George Floyd and the nationwide protests that followed, Fix SAPD circulated a petition, getting enough signatures to put collective bargaining to a vote. They say it's the first step toward keeping bad officers off the force and improving officer accountability. The San Antonio Police Officers Association argues that's not the case. They say Prop B is defunding of police and would dismantle the department. This is a complex, weighty issue, but that's the purpose of this episode, to explain all you need to know before you vote. Let's start with what you'll see on the ballot. This is what Prop B looks like. 
As is the case with a lot of ballot initiatives, the wording itself is confusing, so let's boil it down. It calls for the repeal of Texas Local Government Code Chapter 174, which allows police unions to collectively bargain while keeping in place the rule that says officers can't strike or stage a lockout. Collective bargaining is a process in which a union and their employer, in this case the city, determine wages, hours, and working conditions for all the employees the union represents, police officers. It's contract negotiations, and right now, it's a major debate. You realize the problem lies within the contract, and the problem with the contract lies within 174. Uh, so it's you just kind of follow the breadcrumbs and you realize, oh, bad contracts lead to poor performances by some of these officers. These contracts are set up by certain laws, in this case, state laws, and Prop B allows us to go ahead and change all of those things. The police union contract allows for arbitration. An officer fired by the police chief can have a third party arbitrator determine whether they should get their job back. Fix SAPD believes that fails to hold bad officers accountable. It's not about account accountability, it's about defunding. Danny Diaz, the president of SOPOA, disagrees with Fix SAPD's argument. The union believes Prop B is defunding of police, a rally cry that gained national attention in the wake of protests pushing for police reform. But Prop B would not affect the budget of SAPD in any way. Still, Diaz argues that defunding would be the ultimate effect because he says doing away with collective bargaining would be doing away with competitive pay and benefits for officers. Currently, there's a little over 600 officers that have 20 years or more on that could just leave or move on to another department um, that has a different uh, or, or a better way of, of achieving their pay and benefits, uh, their, uh, their working hours, their equipment. So why would, if collective bargaining goes away, why does that automatically mean that decent pay and benefits would go away as well? Because we'd be at the, uh, at the mercy of the city. So what you see here is it's just, you know, a scare tactic. It's telling people, hey, this is what's going to happen because we know this word scares people, not because it's an actual conversation about the facts. Of the eight largest cities in Texas, only San Antonio, El Paso and Corpus Christi use collective bargaining. The union also opposes Prop B by arguing that arbitration has rarely given a bad officer his or her job back after being fired by the chief. Ten times over ten years, the union says. But Fix SAPD says that 70% of SAPD officers fired get their jobs back. So which is true? KSAT crunched the numbers and we can explain. From 2010 to the summer of 2020, there were 71 police officer terminations. Some of those cases are still pending. In 43 cases, the officer appealed their termination and a decision was made whether to put that officer back on the job. 10 of those officers got their jobs back through arbitration. 20 were brought back by the police chief, which in some cases happens because it becomes too expensive for the city to uphold an officer's firing through the arbitration process. That amounts to 69 0.8% of fired officers who appealed their terminations being brought back to the force from 2010 to 2020. And that number is still a huge point of contention between both sides here. Yeah, still ahead. We're going to explain what's in the current police union contract when it comes to officer discipline. We're continuing this special presentation of KSAT Explains, Proposition B, the proposed repeal of collective bargaining. The local police union questions why the activist organization Fix SAPD is targeting collective bargaining in the first place. If it was just about accountability, then why did, that, why did they not go after Articles 28 and 29 uh, specifically? Because that's what deals in our collective bargaining agreement. That's what deals with our discipline. But we checked with the city, and according to the San Antonio City Attorney, Fix SAPD could not put the contract to a citywide vote. So the process of negotiating that contract is in the group's crosshairs. Everyday civilians couldn't actually interact with the process at all to change the contract to be able to hold officers accountable. And we found that Prop B is the best solution to give San Antonians a voice at the table when it comes to these negotiations and when it comes to creating contracts that actually provide not only transparency to the public, but also greater power to the chief to discipline officers. 
Let's take a minute to talk about some of what's in the current contract between the police union and the city that deals with discipline. In addition to arbitration, the chief can only discipline officers for up to 180 days from the date of a violation. Some argue that it should be 180 days from the discovery of the alleged misconduct. The police chief can't consider misconduct older than 10 years for drug and alcohol violations and can't consider violent violations older than five years during the disciplinary process. I don't know any employer where that is acceptable, and except for in public service as in police and or fire. The city wants all past misconduct to be considered. The current contract also allows officers accused of wrongdoing to get 48 hours notice before speaking with internal investigators. Some of these issues are being discussed between the union and the city as they're negotiating right now. Their current contract is set to expire in September 2021. The union argues they're already talking about possible changes, so why rid them of collective bargaining? How can we be competitive with other cities? Who's going to want to come work here? Bottom line is we need to be competitive with other cities uh, to keep good people here, to make sure that we have officers here. And taking away collective bargaining uh, won't give you that opportunity. Taking away Chapter 174 isn't the only goal of FIX SAPD. It's what's on the ballot now, certainly looming over those current contract negotiations. But FIX SAPD is looking to the May election and beyond. And of course, this is the first step. We've always talked about, you know, Chapter 174, and then we're still collecting petition signatures for Chapter 143. 174, then 143. We explain why FIX SAPD has plans beyond repealing collective bargaining. Up next. One seventy four, then one hundred forty three. It's local government code, which isn't exactly easy to dissect. So now let's break down chapter one hundred forty three to explain just what fix SAPD is working toward in the end. Here's RJ Marquez. San Antonians adopted Chapter 143 back in 1947. It's a broad law that lays out how a city handles personnel issues. It covers things like hirings, promotions, and benefits. Important to note, it doesn't address officer pay, but it does cover firings and the process used for discipline. But because 143 is in place, even if Chapter 174 is repealed in May, police would still have protections in place. It will be no collective bargaining. Now I will say this, that that will not change um, so the civil service rules and requirements. That is certainly a statute that outlines a lot of terms and conditions of employment, so it would not default to automatically. No rules and no protections. They get lots of protections under that statute. Chapter 143 would mean changes for the city and police union in terms of how they determine officer pay and benefits. No more collective bargaining. So a contract between the city and union mm -hmm. is not required. City staff and the city manager would recommend officer pay and benefits, and the city council would vote whether to approve. As far as hiring, firing, and discipline, think of 143 as a baseline. If a collective bargaining agreement goes away, 143 spells out how to proceed. Trouble is, a lot of those rules are the same or similar to the rules spelled out in the current contract between the city and union. Protections that fix SAPD and its supporters oppose. For example, under 143, a hearing examiner can make a ruling if an officer appeals a termination somewhat similar to arbitration. They make the decision and they, they have the sole authority to overturn a chief's ability to run his department and and that is it's a pretty big deal nowadays. 143 also says only the police chief can view an officer's personnel file, not the media or victims or the general public. And it says the police chief can't suspend an officer for an offense that happened more than 180 days ago, which, as we mentioned just a minute ago, is also in the current contract. There's been many times discipline's been overturned because of the 180 day rule. Which is why FIX SAPD wants chapter 143 to be repealed too. That is their ultimate goal, but organizers say repealing chapter 174 is the first step in this process. Fix SAPD got the more than 20,000 signatures needed to put 174 in front of voters, but repealing 143 requires roughly 80,000 signatures collected in 180 days. To my knowledge, no city has been successful in repealing civil service 
under this standard that this legislature adopted. So 143 is like the Hotel California. You can check out any time you like, you know, but you can never leave. I mean, you can't, you can't get out of it. But first things first for San Antonio voters. If collective bargaining is repealed in May and Chapter 143 kicks in, the police union and the city could still negotiate a contract under what's called meet and confer. Think of it kind of like collective bargaining light. It can still bring both sides to the negotiating table, but they don't have to if they don't want to. In the absence of 174, the ma management generally has more power to control the terms and conditions of employment. The union has to agree to meet and confer and petition the city. If 174 were repealed, it would be up to the association to bring forward a petition signed by a majority of the affected officers to the council. And then the city council has to approve it or they could let voters decide. Fix SAPD supports meet and confer and points to the city of Austin as an example. And you actually see in Austin, they actually have better pay, better benefits, and they have a meet and confer system. So we see that under meet and confer, Police are still able to get great benefits, great wages. They're still able to have great working conditions. We still can attract great officers to the city as they do. But Sapoa disagrees. Austin is one of those cities that chose to defund their department. And look what's going on there. There's multiple articles, not just Austin, but other cities who have defunded. And they are losing their officers. They cannot keep their officers. They cannot get new officers there. Not only that, but their crime rates are skyrocketing. Their homicide rates alone are exceeding the national average. That claim from a Sapoa representative during the Fairfax KSAT San Antonio report debate on Prop B is just one of several being made in this conversation that needs some clarification. Garrett Berger takes a closer look. We looked at a Texas Tribune analysis of violent crime rates in four of the biggest cities in Texas, including Austin and San Antonio from 2008 to 2018. No city's crime rate skyrocketed. The city of Austin has used a meet and confer system for more than 20 years. As far as defunding, the Austin City Council did vote last year to cut the police department budget by roughly a third. But Proposition B, repealing 174, would not affect the budget for SAPD. Another claim that's been tossed around quite a bit, Fix SAPD has repeatedly said the repeal of Chapter 174 allows for more civilian oversight on officer discipline and benefits. Well, that's a little murky. If the union and the city agree to a meet and confer system and come up with a contract, Fix SAPD says voters could change a contract by collecting enough signatures to put the issue on a ballot. So civilian oversight isn't a given if collective bargaining goes away. Right now, the city and police union contract does include a citizen's advisory review board, which makes recommendations on officer discipline. Earlier in the show, you heard the union president say that repealing collective bargaining could result in San Antonio police officers losing competitive pay and benefits. So is there any proof that would happen? According to the Austin police union president, not necessarily. The San Antonio Express News quoted him as saying that APD has done well under a meet and confer system. According to the paper, salaries have gone up 90% at Austin police under that system. Here's a look at where San Antonio is right now. The city recently hired a consulting firm to do an analysis of compensation across eight major Texas cities, including San Antonio. The base pay for San Antonio police officers is $56,472 for fiscal year 2021. For Austin, it's $61,662. We should note the cost of living is higher in Austin. The analysis found that San Antonio police officer pay ranks above the median compared to the group of cities surveyed. The city of San Antonio's average contribution for dental and vision is among the highest. Another perk San Antonio police officers have that other cities survey don't, the city contributes $384 a year for prepaid legal services. Overall, the study found that San Antonio ranked second out of the eight cities studied. Austin's police department was number one. There are two things we found Fix SAPD and police union representatives can't agree on. Neither wants bad officers on the force, and those officers are a small fraction of the dedicated first responders we have serving our city. We hope the special presentation of KSAT Explains gave you a better understanding of what Prop B would and would not accomplish if it's passed. You can check out all the information you saw here tonight on KSAT.explains. That's also where you can find this entire Prop B episode of the show, as well as all the other topics we've covered so far. Election Day is this Saturday, May 1st. We'll be right back. 
One little sprinkle on the northwest side of town right now, Leon Valley and stretching basically up to Chavano Park between 410 and 1604. Castle Hills, your next Hollywood Park about to get hit by this little sprinkle. I, not a lot associated with it, probably a few hundredths of an inch. That's about it. But we have more activity we're watching coming in from the southwest and we'll continue to see this bit of development. These light, widely separated and spotty showers through the evening and nighttime hours as well. Our rain and storm chance is really peak tomorrow night. That's the main focus. We'll have some hit or miss activity between now and then, but tomorrow night's when we're expecting the most widespread showers and storms. So some rain and drizzle to start the day tomorrow, a damp start, then a little bit of sunshine into the afternoon, making it to 87 and very sticky and humid as well. It's after dark tomorrow, so tomorrow night into the pre down hours on Thursday when we're really boosting those rain chances 60 70% more widespread, more numerous showers and storms. And of course, as usual, any storm that can develop this time of year runs the risk of becoming strong to severe with those strong straight line winds and maybe even some localized large hail. Then we clear out Thursday afternoon and now actually rain chances are starting to look a little more likely as we get into Saturday. We'll be right back. I want to remind you, you can find that KSAT Explains episode dedicated to all things Prop B on our website, ksat.com slash explains. That's also where we're starting a live stream here in just a few minutes after this newscast on another episode of our show focused on the rise of conspiracy theories. And whether you like Prop B or don't, the important thing is to vote. See you on